Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Game Hammer Extra. And today, uh, for the first of several episodes, we're going to be taking a look at this massive PS2 collection I've got here. Now, I have over 1,600 games here. I'm going for a complete set of PAL games for the PlayStation 2. And I'm about 75% of the way there. We can't say for certain how much of a percentage of the way there I am because there isn't a complete list of PAL games yet. The uh, biggest uh, lists that I've seen online don't include some of the games that I've actually got in this set, which is partly why I'm doing this, so you can see them, see that they do exist, and then maybe we can get a list together eventually. Not going to be today, of course. I don't have all of them. But... It'll get us part of the way there. So let's get straight into it. This is going to have to be split into multiple videos, otherwise it would be a five or six hour thing if I end up talking uh, talking all the way through it. I have been wanting to do that on some PlayStation 2 games. So let's get straight in from the start. We're going to go alphabetically, but we're going to start with the ones that don't fit into alphabetically. So the numbers, the punctuation ones, and a few others. Let's get into it. But we're going to start off at the start, and we're going to go through alphabetical order, but these ones are a bit iffy because they start with a dot, a full stop. So we've got dot hack. This one's a dot hack infection. Then it goes on to mutation, outbreak, and quarantine. These are the, the first four. It says the final chapter here. That's a bit uh, shiny. It says the final chapter there, but they did make more. But uh, this is the this is, these are the four for the PlayStation 2. So what we've got here are four amazing role-playing games. I do enjoy these. I haven't gone through all of them yet. I haven't gone through the whole game. But what I've played is fantastic. It's well worth picking up if you can find these. There are four of them. They're a bit pricey. I mean, this is the four together is going to set you back about 90 quid, if uh, not 100 not. So try and pick them up here and there as you go, and it will make it an awful lot easier to budget for. But they are worth picking up. I've got them in uh, little protective cases because, to be honest with you, if they got damaged, I would never forgive myself. So I've got them protected. So let's uh, go on next to another part of the set where I basically go through and try and get sets of things, uh, subsets of the PlayStation 2 PAL set essentially. It makes it easier to work out what you're needing to do and uh, how you go about it. So I've got these as 007. They're the James Bond games. And there are six of them on the PlayStation 2. So we have Quantum of Solace, which is the last one, and it's hard to get. I cannot get that off there. It's very annoying. But Quantum of Solace is a really difficult one to get. It's good, though. It's a nice uh, third-person, sorry, first-person shooter. It's a lot of fun to play. I managed to get that in decent quality with the manual, which is hard to get. It's weird that it's so difficult. But of course, we also have the two that uh, basically defined Bond on the PlayStation 2 and the GameCube as well, which is Agent Under Fire and Nightfire. Get these if you can. I have, uh, I've loved these since I played them on the GameCube back when I was, uh, oh my goodness, I was still at university at the time. One of my friends had it. And uh, I don't know where, where he got it. He wasn't a big Bond fan, but he, he got... Uh, Agent Under Fire, and we spent weeks just playing it. It was so much fun. So when I got the chance to get uh, a GameCube myself, I got it with Agent Under Fire, and uh, then I picked up the PS2 versions as well. They are great fun, well worth playing. First-person shooters, but more like a, a Metroid style, so it's more like an action-adventure than a, th a first-person shooter standard. Goldeneye uh, Rogue Agent is, of course, a, a first-person shooter, which is great for not entirely Bond, but still damn good. Of course, we also have From Russia With Love, which has the best opening for any Bond game, because you get to fly on a jetpack. So, always great fun. Sean Connery as, uh, as Bond, doing classic Bond stuff. They are the jetpack, right from the start of the game. Great fun. Really enjoy playing that one as well. And then the one that I don't know a huge amount about, because I didn't play a huge amount of it, 007 Everything or Nothing. Well, if the options are Everything or Nothing, you're going to go for Everything, aren't you? <laughs> 
Uh, so it's a third person uh, action adventure game, that one, rather than the first person perspective. A bit like uh, From Russia with Love. So a lot of fun from these ones. Uh, six Bond games. They're not really part of the uh, the, the uh, punctuation or numbers set, as I would call it, if I'm arranging them alphabetically. But I do tend to go for 007, which is why they're in this range. Probably shouldn't, but there we are. That's what I do. After that, we have a load of other ones. These are all numbers ones, and I don't have the full range yet. That's just one of those things. But we're going to go through what we've got. 4x4 Evo. Standard um, off-road uh, racing action game. Not bad. Not the best ever, but not bad. Seven Sins. This is, if I remember correctly, a PAL exclusive. And it's one of the worst games I've ever played. If you imagine The Sims, only aimed at uh, 13, 14-year-old teenage boys, then that's what this is. It's ugh, not good. Badly uh, done. Not brilliant graphics, controls aren't the best, and the storyline is just abysmal. Then we have 10-pin Championship Alley, 10-pin bowling game, generic, uh, it's by Liquid Games, so you know it's not going to be top of the range. It's a, it's a budget game with budget game mechanics. It's not bad, but it's not brilliant. One of my favourite games on the entire set and system is 18-wheeler American Pro Trucker. I played this so much at university because they had an arcade of it. It was a stand-up arcade, but it had the steering wheel, so you kind of got a, a, fair, a fair feeling for it, and it was a lot of fun. So when I found it was on PlayStation 2, I had to have it and the steering wheel to go with it. So I've been playing that uh, ever since, and I love every minute of it. Next up we've got 24, the game, where you can be Jack Bauer. I have never managed to get into this game because uh, I just can't get to grips with it. It's one of those things. It just doesn't click with me. It might click with you. Next up we have uh, 25 to Life, which is basically an IDOS version of Grand Theft Auto. Really is an IDOS version of Grand Theft Auto. There's not much else you can say about it. 50 Cent Bulletproof. I think there's another 50 Cent game, but I don't have it yet. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of a Grand Theft Auto style engine, but it's 50 cent. Not bad, not great, but not bad. It's one of those middle of the road games that's actually surprisingly not as bad as you would expect. Then we have 187 Ride or Die, a game that I must have bought quite a while ago because I have no idea what it's about. Looks on the back a bit like a Burnout style game. That's all I can say about it. It's so memorable that I forgot I had it. Finally, on the numbers set, 1945 volumes 1 and 2. These are some of the best arcade uh, vertically scrolling shooters you will ever play. The uh, PlayStation 2 version is a collection of the first two and they are great. You might know them also as Strikers 1945. Brilliant games, amazing games. I've reviewed them on uh, Game Hammer Daily, I think it was. Well worth having a play. If you get a chance to pick this up, it's only about 50p most of the time. Do take the chance. It's fantastic. After we've done the numbers, we've got uh, the start of the alphabet. So let's have a look at A. We start with ACDC Live Rock Band. It's one of the various rock band song packs. We only got, I believe there are only three of them. ACDC Song Pack 1 and Song Pack 2. Green Day did come out, if I remember correctly, in uh, America in the PAL territories. There may have been a heavy metal or something like that as well, but we only got uh, three of them as far as I can tell. This is ACDC. It's not just ACDC on it. I believe there are other bands as well. It's just one of those things. It's, a, it's basically it's rock band only with curated uh, songs. So not bad. Not the best ever, but not bad. Then we have the Ace Combat series. This one is Ace Combat The Belkin War. Now, if any of you are familiar with Ace Combat, you'll know that it's a combat flight simulator action arcade style game. It's a lot of fun, really difficult at times, but really, really good fun. And there are several of them, so let's pull them up. We have uh, The Belkin War. We also have Distant Thunder, which appears to be a little bit sticky on one corner. Yeah, yep. <sighs> A little bit sticky, so it's stuck to the other uh, game. And that's uh, they're all pretty much the same style of game. And then we have Ace Combat Squadron Leader, 
And uh, oh, I thought there were I thought there were more than that. There were only three. One of these was actually difficult to get. I think it was Squadron Leader. It took us a while to get, but we've got all three of them now. There are more. They went on to make um, for the 360 and uh, stuff like that, which are pretty good. And uh, if you're into them, you can't go much wrong. Then we have Ace Lightning. Now this is a, a game that's uh, primarily marketed at children. It's a 3D uh, action platformer, beat em up style game. It's not bad, it's not the best game ever that I've played, but it's not bad, especially since it is from CBBC, so it's a, a children's game from Children's BBC. Next up we have uh, Action Man Atom, which is Alpha Teens on Machines. You can tell by the front that it is based on a cartoon. It's also tell by the front that it's made by Blast that it's not going to be very good. And yeah, it's not. The controls aren't the best, but uh, it's a budget game. You get what you pay for, basically. Next up, we have one of those uh, that I went out of my way to find because I knew I was going to adore it, and I was right. Activision Anthology. If you like old Atari games and you have a PlayStation 2, you need this. This has some amazing stuff on it. Featuring totally awesome 80s tunes, and yeah, it is, it's got a few damn good tunes on it. But what you're really looking for is the game list. So we've got, uh, on here we've got oh, some amazing stuff. Enduro, uh, Grand Prix, Hero. That's an amazing one. Pitfall, Pitfall 2, River Raid. Oh, some great, great games on here. I'm particularly uh, enamoured by Hero and uh, River Raid. I love them. Some amazing games on there. Get it, play it, you'll love it. It's even got some that were unreleased, which are a lot of fun to play. Moving on, we have uh, The Adventures of Jimmy Neutron Boy Genius Jet Fusion. Yes, that is the title of this thing. It's a ridiculously long one. It doesn't fit on one line on the side. I didn't really want to focus on that. Oh well, never mind. This, like, uh, where is it? Like Ace Lightning, this is a platform action game. Standard, standard fare, bit of a collect up, bit of an action one. Not a bad game, not the best ever, but not a bad game. Next up we have, just, I can't believe I have to go through these. AFL, Aussie Rules Football, 2004 and 2006. No 2005, that's a bit of a weird one. Well, or at least I don't think this is 2005. So uh, you can tell by the G on this that this is an Australian one. So this was difficult to find. You'll find it hard if you're trying to collect in the UK. Get a friend who's in Australia or get or find an Australian YouTuber that's willing to do some swaps with uh, stuff they can't get. The best way to get it. Or try and look out at CEX. It can happen. It's Australian rules for both. And not much else to say. They're not bad games. Um, I enjoyed them when I was playing, but uh, it's not really my thing. My sport is ice hockey, basketball, that kind of thing. I love that. But they're not bad. If you're into Australian rules football, you could certainly do worse. And that one's even iToy compatible, which is just weird. Then we have a generic tennis game, Agassi Tennis Generation. Generic tennis. Not bad. Not uh, really something to write home about. What else we got here? We have... A weird one that I didn't expect to find on a PlayStation 2. Age of Empires 2. Yeah. It's full Age of Empires. It's an actual uh, strategy game, real-time strategy. It's Age of Empires on a console. Weird. I, um, I remember playing Halo Wars several years ago now, my goodness, and thinking it was weird that I was playing a real-time strategy on a console. Could have been playing it years earlier on Age of Empires. It's not a bad game, actually. I got into it when I was trying it. So if you're into real-time strategy, give it a try. Oh, I'm getting bleeped out. Never mind. And then up next we have Aggressive Inline featuring Tag Chris. Don't really know who, who he is. It's inline skating. It's basically the inline skating version of Tony Hawk's. Not much I can say about that, apart from it is like Tony Hawk's. So next up we have Air Blade. This one, again... It's it's like an air skating version of Tony Hawk's. Not much else to say. Not bad. <sighs> yeah, really can't say much else aside from it's by Criterion, so that's probably pretty good. Then we have Air Raid 3. Now, if you know your Atari games, you'll know that Air Raid is one of the rarest games on the Atari. This tries to make out that it's a sequel to it. It's an arcade action-style uh, clone of uh, 
Afterburner, the Sega thing, Afterburner. But it's playable, but there's not a huge amount to it. It's a bit generic. You will die quickly if you uh, aren't lucky. You probably won't be lucky most of the time. It really is graphically quite impressive for the first uh, few minutes when you see it. And then you'll find that there's no substance to it. Up next we have Air Ranger Rescue Helicopter. This is the first one we're talking about from Midas. Midas, along with Phoenix Games and Blast, are notorious purveyors of crap. Not all of their games are bad, but a fair amount are. Basically, if you see Midas on the cover, you're probably not going to get the greatest game ever. This is uh, a helicopter rescue game. It's, um, I believe it's originally from Japan and Midas just imported it, which is one of those times when you think, actually, this might be all right and worth a try. That's uh, the way to go. With Phoenix and Midas, if it's imported from Japan rather than them sourcing it and making it uh, through a, a third-party company on commission, it's likely to be better. Then we have the weirdest game in my set, Akira Psycho Ball, a pinball game that's weird and has interchangeable sides on the pinball table, which was created basically to cash in on the DVD release of Akira. Yeah, you heard that right. There's no other reason for this game to exist. It's actually not bad, though. It's not the best game ever, but uh, the pinball tables are quite inventive, and the controls are pretty good, so if you get a chance to play it, give it a try, but don't pay over the odds for it, because there are better pinball games out there. Then we have Alan Hansen's Sports Challenge. Oxygen games. Like Liquid Games, they are purveyors of really generic uh, budget titles. They're not bad uh, per se, but they're not great. And then we have Alarm for Cobra 11 Hot Pursuit. Although on the side it says Alarm for Cobra 11 Volume 2 Hot Pursuit. So I'm assuming that there is a Volume 1. It's not on PS2 though, from what I can tell. I believe it's a PS1 game. Again, Midas, but this is based on a German television show, and it's bad. It's so bad because the controls are heavy, the cars aren't fast enough, there's not really much going on, and it's just not very good. Before we go any further with the A's, I want to talk about the special collection I've got over here. We have the Call of Duty Trilogy, which is uh, just three Call of Duty games in a slipcase. It's literally that. The standard games are in there. Then we have a uh, special edition Devil May Cry 3 and uh, Monsters Inc, which has all the art cards. It's lovely. Then Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex, which is a special edition version. The one next to it is actually the Godfather. I'm missing part of the uh, slipcase. It's a bit annoying because uh, it doesn't tell you where it is until you pull it out. Hitman Blood Money is also special edition in a uh, metal case. Not... Uh, the best looking one because it looks partly like it's a standard PS2, but it's actually got a metal case. Then we have Lara Croft Tomb Raider Anniversary, which of course has the soundtrack CD, which is very nice. Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. That's not really a um, special edition, it's just a big plastic case. But Manichemia Alchemist of Al Revis is the same as uh, with Tomb Raider Anniversary. It has a soundtrack CD, which is nice. Need for Speed Carbon Collector's Edition was one of the hardest games for me to find. The amount of times that I've found that game without the, the case is just weird. Then we have Onomusha 3, the special edition version. Peter Jackson's King Kong special edition. The Prince of Persia trilogy is a bit of an oddity. I'm going to pull it out. There are several uh, collections like this on the PS2 where it's uh, three games in just a big bulk box. So it's an interesting one, but uh, if I turn it round, you'll see that it's just the standard games. So if you've already got them, this is kind of something that you'd only pick up if you're really collecting, or you have a chance to pick up three games at once for a cheap price. As I say, there are more versions like that. There's a Crash Bandicoot trilogy and things like that. Uh, then we have Scarface, the special edition version, Shadow of the Colossus in the cardboard case which is actually easier to find than the plastic case version. I don't have the plastic case version, would love to get it. Then we have Silent Hill 2, the original version. The uh, director's cut on the Platinum is actually the better version to get if you want the full game, because it's the Xbox version on, P on PS2, which is a great 
great thing. If you can find a copy of the special edition, it's the platinum version, go for that instead. But if you want completeness and uh, the nice case, you've got to go for the original. Then we have Unlimited Saga, which got a bad reputation when it came out. And unfortunately, the cardboard case did get a bit creased on that one. Not my fault, unfortunately, but there you are. And then finally, Xeno Saga Episode 2, the only one of the three Xeno Saga games that actually came out in the PAL regions. Bit of an annoyance. I bought that back when uh, it first came out. I'm glad I did because you can't get the cardboard case in that good condition anymore. Just how it is. And those are my special editions and collector's cases. It's not a complete set. There are more. I'm still out there looking for some, but that's what I've got so far. So we're back now over to the chair where we're talking about more of the uh, PS2 standard range. We've got here Alex Ferguson, Player Manager 2001. It's a football management game, very similar to Premiership Manager or Championship Manager if you've ever played those. It's just got Alex Ferguson's name on it. It's uh, by 3DO who started pumping out a very large amount of games for the PS2 right at the start of the PS2's launch and uh, the years. It's not a bad game, but it's not exceptional. It's just one of those things. If you like a, if you like Football Manager, you probably like that. Then we have Acclaim's Alias. <sighs> I wanted to like this game. I really did. I, I like the Alias show. I thought it was a fun... It was a fun pastime, let's put it that way. It got a bit stupid at times, and uh, it really should have ended after the uh, uh, dealt with SD6, but, you know, it just went on. And it was all right, but uh, the game... The game isn't that good. It's uh, it's like a, a Tomb Raider spy James Bond drama, but it doesn't work as any of them. So it's just one of those things. A bit middly. What does work, and works exceptionally well, though, is Alien Hominid. Now, if you've ever played... Um, it's it's a side scrolling uh, platform beat 'em up. I, I wanna s I've forgotten what game it was. The game I was thinking about is Beautiful Joe. I just couldn't work it out what it was at the time, but yeah, it's the same sort of uh, cartoony side scrolling action beat 'em up game. Amazing. If you get a chance to play it, definitely take that chance. It's well worth it. This is a fun game. It started out as a flash game, if I remember correctly, and uh, you, you go through the game uh, beating people up, using power-ups. Uh, it's a huge amount of fun. It's a really good game. It's surprisingly cheap, and most people don't talk about it anymore, but if you see this, get it. It's great good fun. Proper traditional style, platforming, side-scrolling, action, adventure, great fun. Then we have Aliens vs Predator Extinction. Now this is one that I wouldn't have expected to see on the PS2 because, as I said with the previous game, this is a real-time strategy. It's not what I was expecting an Alien vs Predator game to be, but it kind of works. It's tailored for the consoles, and as a result, it's quite effective. I really enjoyed it. It's good fun. But uh, next up we have All-Star Baseball 2002 and 2003. Not the best baseball games I've ever played, but not the worst either. If you're into baseball, these are worth uh, having a look for. Why is this one bright blue? Because it's not a real uh, PlayStation 2 case. That Basically, it's a replacement case. But, uh, you know, it kind of works. I don't have the manual for that one, but what can you do, right? The manual's here for this one. And they used to be really big manuals, you know. These are decent, decent enough games. I'm not a massive baseball fan, I prefer basketball and ice hockey, but what's in here is good. So, yeah, we didn't get many of the baseball games in the UK for the PAL regions in general, in fact, now I'm thinking about it, but what we got were decent enough. Then we have Alone in the Dark, which... Guys, Alone in the Dark could have been great. This could have been a brilliant game. If they'd gone the Resident Evil 4 route and done it properly, it would have been great. But they didn't, so it's not. And the same with uh, Alone in the Dark, The New Nightmare. They just don't work as... <sighs> not as well as you would hope. It's... The original Alone in the Dark game is... It's just amazing. It's one of those pinnacle turning point games. These ones aren't. Let's just put it that way. So what else we got? Alpine Racer 3. Um, I'm assuming 1 and 2 are on the PlayStation 1 because they're not on uh, PlayStation 2. If you've played SSX, you know what Alpine Racer is. It's a downhill uh, ice skiing racing game, basically. It's a lot of fun. 
the controls are great and uh, it's fun, but SSX beats it at the punch. Then we have uh, Alpine Skiing 2005. There was an awful. There's a thing about the PlayStation 2. If there's something that's good and popular, we get an awful lot of them. So we got Alpine Skiing 2005. Again, it's an Alpine Ski racing game. Alpine Ski Racing 2007. Same thing, just an updated one. Like I said, if there was something good on the PlayStation 2, we got a lot of them. And then after that, we have Alter Time, Alter Space, Alter Echo. Alter Echo is odd. Let's put it that way. It's it's odd. I keep mistaking, mistaking this for Endgame because uh, I don't know why. Endgame is a, a light gun game. This is a third-person action-adventure. And as a result, I can't remember a thing about it. It's... I'm going to have to play it again and see what it's like. I know that it works because I've tested it. I can't even remember playing it. It's so memorable. So let's put these to one side because we've got an awful lot more. What else we got? Well, next up is Altered Beast. Unfortunately, this this isn't that good. It's, uh, it's a third-person brawler in a 3D environment. The moves aren't that great and the gameplay is just a bit dull. Alvin and the Chipmunks. Now, Alvin and the Chipmunks is... <sighs> It's hard to explain what this is. It's a rhythm game, and it appears to be based on the film. And, yeah, that as much as I can say about it. An American Tale is one of those games that I showed on a Game Hammer livestream of the worst PlayStation 2 games. And that's for a reason. This looks like it's based on the film. The film is a classic. It's absolutely great. This is Super Monkey Ball. I kid you not. Super Monkey Ball is the first level, and it's just awful. It's mini games, and it's really, really terrible. Then we get a game that really should not exist. America's 10 Most Wanted. This is a first-person shooter based on killing terrorists. It's about as good as it sounds, yeah. Then we have AMF Extreme Bowling. Like I said, if there's something that's popular, the PlayStation 2 got an awful lot of them. It's by Blast, so you know it's not going to be very good. It's a subpar bowling game. There you go. And One Street Ball is actually a rather good basketball game. I was very surprised about this. Hard to find sometimes. It goes in and out of uh, being available. But uh, it's a great basketball game. If you get your chance to play it, give it a try. Now comes the first of the Phoenix games. Well, I'll say games. This is Animal Soccer World. Now, if you've ever seen uh, Disney's Robin Hood or Bedknobs and Broomsticks, I think it is. Yeah, Bedknobs and Broomsticks, where the animals play football. That's what this is based on. That particular scene. It's a terrible East German cartoon from the, I believe, it's uh, either the late Soviet era or just after the fall of Berlin Wall. It's so bad you would not believe. And that is the main pull of this uh, CD. I can't, I can't call it a game because it's not. It's a, it's a CD video with VHS quality uh, video, terrible animation. I, in fact, I've got better animation in some of the cartoon sections in some of the Game Hammer reviews I've done. And then a few uh, mini games. You can paint a scene from, you can paint a frame from, from the video, a, a sliding puzzle, a jigsaw puzzle, and some sort of memory card game. Yeah. Keeps the kids occupied for about five minutes. Let's move on to something that's quite a lot better. This is Animaniacs, The Great Edgar Hunt. And uh, this is a third-person platformer in 3D. A bit like Ratchet & Clank style of uh, 3D platformer. A lot of fun. Great characterization. Good controls. A lot of fun to play. A game that I can't remember a single thing of, again, is the Ant Bull. You'll find that a lot because I've got far too many of these. I've been collecting for six years. Every single game in my collection has been played, but whether I remember it or not is a different matter because some of them just don't stick in your memory. This is based on the film, and again, it's a 3D platformer based on the film, basically. On the same lines is Ants Extreme Racing, based on the film, vaguely, but it's a kart racing game because Mario Kart was popular, therefore we had to have a thousand of the Mario Kart clones. Not the best, not the worst, but I was never a fan of ants. What I was a fan of, though, is 
Ape Escape. So Ape Escape 2 is brilliant. I love this game. So much fun. Run around in a 3D environment collecting uh, escaped naughty monkeys. Great fun. So good, in fact, that the third one came out and I had to have that as well. But of course it did. I'm going for the complete set. Ape Escape 3, 2 or 3 gets either or both of these. You'll have a huge amount of fun. They're brilliant, hilarious games. And what is also fun, which you should get a copy of, is Aqua Aqua Wet Tricks 2. This is a sequel to the uh, water-based Tetris uh, spin-off from the N64 and a few other uh, consoles as well, I think. I love this game. So much fun. Played it on an early Game Hammer daily, if I remember correctly. In fact, it might have been a Game Hammer one-shot from back when I was doing those. So much fun. Great to play. You really need to get this. It's usually around for cheap. So give it a try. If you're into puzzle games, you'll have a lot of fun. What else have we got? Well, Aqua Team Hunger Force Zombie Ninja Pro-Am. That's a bit of a mouthful, isn't it? What a title. This is... It's a set of mini games, if I remember correctly. It's been a very long time since I played it, because to be honest with you, it didn't stick in my memory or click with me when I played it the first time. It's it's like a, a set of mini games, if I remember correctly. Not much else I can say. I probably should have another look at it. I don't remember it being bad, I just don't remember it being all that brilliant either. Then we have Area 51. This is a uh, first-person shooter. It's actually pretty good. It says here, PSM2 says, this could be PS2's best FPS ever. It's not. It's a good one, but it's not the best ever. So, yeah, well worth giving it a try. A lot of fun. Then we have the arcade. Now, it's got liquid uh, games on the front, so you know it's not going to be the best ever. This is a set of uh, reimagined arcade classics. Let's put it that way. So we've got on here 10 classic favourites brought to life with 21st century technology. No. No, you don't. It's, it's weird. It's like they've got a kind of Space Invaders that doesn't work as well as Space Invaders. They've got uh, a kind of asteroids that doesn't work quite as well as asteroids. Cub Cubits in here, but it's not as good as Cubit. We've got a bit of Bomberman, but it's not as good as Bomberman. It's that kind of thing. It's it's a budget uh, collection of mini versions of, our, of classic arcade games, none of which are as good as the originals. So let's move on to Ark, Twilight of the Spirits. This is a, a Japanese role-playing game. Lovely graphics, lovely uh, look and feel to the game. Great uh, to play if you're into role-playing games, decent story, well worth having a look if you can find it around. I believe it has a different name in the US, and I cannot for the life of me remember what it's called. Then we have Arctic Thunder. Now you can tell from this that it's likely to be a uh, snowmobile racing game. So when you look at the back, and it's a snowmobile racing game, I think you'll be alright with that. It's a bit of fun, it's not the greatest ever, but it's pretty good fun. I enjoyed it when I played it. Then we have Armored Core 2. If you like giant robots having a fight, you will like Armored Core 2. I like it. It's a lot of fun. It can be difficult to get to grips with the controls, but it's well worth giving it a try because it is fun to play. So is Armored Core 2 Another Age. This, like a sequel spin-off, it's a bit of an oddity. Again, difficult to get used to the controls unless you've played the, the other one, of course. Uh, but well worth giving it a try. It's deep, it's complex, it's fun to play. Then we have Armored Core 3. These just keep going. Again, same sort of thing. And you might notice from software, you know it's going to be difficult. <laughs> these are a lot of fun. This series is brilliant. There's loads of these on the PlayStation 2. So get in if you can, because they're worth it. Armored Core Nexus, another one. And Armored Core 9 Breaker. I believe there are some more. I can't remember what they're called. I believe there are more, but uh, these are the ones I've managed to track down so far. They're difficult to find. Certainly, these two that are in the plastic cases, they're hard to find and far more expensive than the other ones, but well worth it. If you're into your giant robot fighting games, give these a try. They're brilliant. Then we move on to Army Men. Now, these got a fair amount of flack when they were coming out because uh, people said that they were just being churned out, they were low budget, and they weren't that great. Another one from 3DO. The thing is, some of these are damn good games. Now, Army Men Air Attack Blades Revenge, it's a helicopter game, a little bit like a 3D Desert Strike. 
Uh, wasn't the one uh, Soviet Strike or something on uh, the Sega Saturn? I remember that being a really good game. This feels an awful lot like that. If you're into Desert Strike and things like that, you'll probably find this game is an awful lot of fun, because I certainly did. Well recommend that one. Then we have Army Men Major Malfunction. This one wasn't as good. It's a third-person uh, action game, and it doesn't quite work for me. Give it a try if you see it around for cheap, because it's not bad. It's just it doesn't quite click with me. Next up, we have Army Men RTS, the real-time strategy game. It's a real-time strategy game, but with Army Men. Kind of works. Not my favourite of the, the genre, but it kind of works. Although, having said that, not much can compete with Dune 2, which is my favourite of the genre. Army Men Sarge's Heroes 2 has... Uh, well, it's uh, 3D but it's published by Midas. Midas, uh, as I've mentioned before, not the best indicator of quality. Sarge's Heroes 2... Uh, it's so middling that I can't even remember playing it. I know I have played it because every game in my collection has been played. <sighs> yeah, it's just one of those. It doesn't really stick in the memory. So then we move on and we've got Arthur and the Visibles. Now this is based on a film. It's based on a film by Luc Besson. So you know it's going to be a bit odd. I can't remember a single thing about the film. I'm pretty sure I've seen clips of it, but aside from that, I couldn't tell you. This is a generic uh, film tie-in game. You know the type. 3D, a bit like Ratchet & Clank, platforming, yeah, 3D roaming. Not that memorable, not that great, but not that bad either, funnily enough. It's like middle of the road. Then we have Asterix and Obelix XXL2 Mission Las Vegas. This... <sighs> It's hard to describe what this is. It's an awful lot of fun, and it's also taken the piss out of a huge amount of games. For example, here's an Asterix version of Mario, here's an Asterix version of Sonic, Asterix version of Pac-Man, Asterix version of Tomb Raider. This is... Uh, it's got a lot of character to it, and it was a hell of a lot of fun when I played it. 3D uh, roaming, uh, fairly free roaming action-adventure game. I really enjoyed it. Well worth giving it a try. So, let's move all of them to the side because I'm starting to run out of space. <laughs> oh my goodness. So many PS2 games. Next up we have Asterix at the Olympic Games. Now this... It wasn't the same as uh, XXL2. Let's put it that way. This one is... It's a lot more grounded. It's a lot more... Um, Restrictive in uh, how it styled itself. It's kind of mini games. It wasn't a huge amount of fun. This is the one to go for. If you see this and you want a complete set, go for it. If you like your kind of uh, sporty uh, novelty games, go for that one. Next up, we have Astro Boy. Now, this. This is the uh, Sega and Sonic Team version. I believe there are two Astro Boy games. I don't have the other one yet. I saw it once, but uh, someone else bought it before I could, and I haven't seen it since. This is pretty much Mega Man. If you want a Mega Man on the, uh, the PlayStation 2 and you're not interested in Mega Man games themselves, or you've already got those, go for Astro Boy. It's the same experience, and it's well worth it. I love this game. It is Fantastic. Speaking of fantastic, Atari Anthology. Get this set. It's Atari 2600 games. You will love it. It is well, well worth grabbing. Loads of games on here that are fantastic. Some of them are arcades, some of them are Atari 2600 versions, some of them are both. You get the options. Centipede, Millipede, uh, Black Widow, I believe... Uh, mm, Major Havoc or whatever it was called on there as well. Loads of fantastic games. Tempests on there. Get it? It's fantastic. Demons to Diamonds, another great one. What isn't so great is A-Train 6. This requires an entire memory card to itself just to save the game. It's a, a PlayStation 2 implementation of a PC and Amiga game which requires a mouse and keyboard to play, so you know it's going to have a problem converting over, and that is its main sticking point. The controls just aren't quite good enough to make it really enjoyable. It's a deep game, it's an immersive game if you can get past the initial block that the uh, controls aren't that great, but 
it has a high high bar to entry. Next up we have Atelier Iris, The Eternal Manor. Another JRPG, another one with an amazing intro, amazing uh, graphics, and a fun storyline. It's not a bad one, it's not the greatest uh, JRPG on the system, but it's far from the worst. And uh, I'm trying to make it not shine so, I can, so you can see it, but it's cartoony, it looks an awful lot like Super Nintendo era graphics at times. Well worth giving it a try if you're a fan of JRPGs. Next up we have Athens 2004. <sighs> It's a it's an Olympic sports game. Mini games for the sports. Not the worst, not the best. It's just middle of the road. So what else have we got? Because we're near the end of the uh, the A's, and this is going to be the end of the uh, video for the for this collection uh, run through. We'll have more with the rest of the set, but the A's will be the end of it for today. So what else have we got to tie this off? Well, we've got um, at the races presents Gallop Racer. It's a horse racing game. It's about horse racing. It's really not that good. ATV off-road. All-terrain vehicles off-road. It's it's an ATV racing game. A lot of fun, that one. Great fun to play. So good that uh, we have ATV off-road Fury 2, which is another one of the same style, and it's just as much fun. ATV off-road through Fury 3, again, Great fun, all the same stuff. ATV Off-Road Fury 4, ATV Quad Power Racing 2. These are all pretty much the same. They're great fun, but uh, I'll tell you one thing, if you've got one, you don't need all of them. And then we have two final ones, Avatar The Legend of Aang and Avatar The Legend of Aang The Burning Earth. Now, I believe this one is the one that's on Xbox 360 and has some of the easiest uh, achievements to get if you want to try it. Both of them are 3D action uh, fighting adventure games. They're a lot of fun to play and uh, well worth picking up if you get the chance. I'd recommend for this one the Xbox 360 version over it just for the achievements if you're an achievement hunter but for everyone else it doesn't matter which version you get because they're just the same. Uh, a lot of fun. This one says free exclusive avatar trading card inside so as you can imagine whoever had it before me has taken that out. But uh, that's the breaks when you're going for second hand isn't it? So, that's the collection of PS2 up to the end of A's. So from uh, punctuation and numbers through to the end of A's. A lot of games, but we still aren't finished. There's an awful lot more to go. And there you are. That's the set. So I hope you have enjoyed this. Please do tune in for the next episode when we'll have a look at some more of them. But for now, I hope you've enjoyed what you've seen. And it gives you an idea of just the range of uh, games that are available on the PS2. But... Anyway, until next time, thank you so much for watching. I've been Zoe Kirk Robinson, you've been watching Game Hammer Extra, and I'll see you later. If you liked today's video, please consider supporting me on Patreon. And an extra special thanks goes out to Chief89 and Tepic. Thank you.